you would open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And uh, we're going to look at verse 7 this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. And um, uh, throughout the summer, we kind of had some different things going on at different times and didn't had a few series of things going on. But uh, um, got something that I believe the Lord has for us that will work together this Sunday and next Sunday. Of course, I believe it all works together. But... Um, this Sunday and next Sunday going to be connected as far as uh, what's going to be taught here. Um, unless, of course, uh, the Holy Spirit has something different for us. But um, I believe that's the plan. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7. says this. For we walk by faith, not by sight. For we walk by faith and, and not by sight. New Living Translation says it this way, for we live by believing and not by seeing. For we live by believing and not by seeing. The Amplified Bible just kind of, of course, amplifies it. It says, for we walk by faith. And then it says this, we regulate our lives and, con and conduct ourselves by our conviction or belief. Respecting man's relationship to God and divine things with trust and holy fervor thus we walk not by sight or appearance not by sight uh, or appearance now that that word walk there uh, just means the way you live the way you live where you go what you're occupied with uh, your stance what you're doing so he says when he says we walk um, he's literally talking about every aspect of everything that you do we walk we live by our faith. We live by our faith. Um, our actions are, are determined by our faith, right? In fact, he says so much so that we live by our faith and not by sight, not by sight. And we, we see a little bit clear. He talks about, uh, and the New Living says, not by seeing, not by seeing or what we can see or not by appearances, not by appearances or the way things are shaped or fashioned or the way that they look, or the way that circumstances may be around you, and what you may see with your natural eyes, or feel with your natural feelings. He says, we don't, we don't live, we don't walk by what we can see naturally. We don't live, we don't walk by the way things appear to be in our life. We don't live and we don't walk by the way we may feel at that moment. How I many you know feelings... Uh, feelings come and go, right? I mean, spiritually speaking, you may, you may feel really saved by Jesus one day, right? And then another day, you may not feel really saved at all. But what moves you past your feelings? Your faith in what God has said. What does God say? You're saved by grace through faith, not saved by feelings and emotion. Now, God has given you emotion and feelings, and I'm not telling you that he hasn't given them to you. They can be used mightily for his purpose and for his kingdom. However, if you walk by feelings, you're going to be walking all over the place all the time. If you live by simply emotion or by, you know, then, then you, may, you may be really high one moment simply because you just drank a Red Bull. And you feel really saved, but simply, you're simply having uh, either a sugar high or whatever else uh, stuff they're putting in there, you know. Right? But if we walk by faith, then we're walking not by what we feel, not by the way things look, not by the way things appear to be, but by a, what God has said, what his word has said, what in fact, Matthew 4, 4 says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God, that has, proceeds out of his mouth. Man shall not live by bread alone. Well, he's talking about you're not just going to live spiritually here. Just, you're, not, you're not just going to live just eating just natural things here. He said, I got some supernatural stuff and way for you to live that's deeper than just, you know what I'm saying, uh, a 12 inch from Subway. Right? It says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So we live by our faith. Amen. By our faith. Well, what is our, what is our faith based on? Or where, where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing, 
Hearing by the, the word of God, Romans 10, 17 says. Faith comes by, by hearing and hearing. Everybody say hearing, hearing. and hearing. hearing. Say it one more time. Say hearing, hearing. and hearing. hearing. By what? Well, according to his word, by his word. What he has said, what, we, what he has spoken, well, clearly we know that this is God's word talking to us. This is something we believe is God anointed, God ordained, spirit inspired, even though it was pinned through the, the hands of men, amen, through the hearts of men, it was inspired by the Holy Spirit without error, without error. Amen, it's God talking to us. So, so then, if we're gonna live life uh, the way that God has called us to live, if we're going to walk the way God has called us to walk, then we've got to learn to walk according to his word and according to what he has spoken. So we walk by faith and not by appearances and not by sight, not by uh, our senses, because your senses can tell you a whole lot of things. Your feelings can tell you a whole lot of things, can even lie to you, honestly. You can, and if you get carried away with feelings or emotion, you can get carried down a river and end up in a place you don't want to end up. Amen. But if we live according to his word, Scripture says that his word is forever settled in heaven. It's forever settled in heaven. It's rock to stand on. It's, it's guidelines to live by. But more than that, it's, it's truth. It's truth. It's God speaking to us. So if we want to do things, live God's, God's way, live the way he's called us to live, and enjoy the benefits of doing things God's way and walking by faith, we've got to walk according to his, his word and according to what he is speaking to us. According to what he is speaking to us. Well, amen. I know there's a lot of things in life when you say, well, the Bible doesn't tell me exactly what to do in this situation. Well, there may be some specific situations in your life where God didn't say, you know, uh, uh, in his word to stay in Alexandria and don't move to Dallas. You know, it may not say go to Dallas, don't stay in Alexandria, right? But it does say that the children of God are led by the Spirit of God, by the Holy Spirit. So then we can take that word and we, we can apply that to what we're going through. And then we can know that by our, our heart and by the Holy Spirit, we can know what to do. We can know what to do. So it doesn't say we, we live by uh, feelings. It doesn't say we walk by the almighty dollar. Come on, somebody. Doesn't say money's, we walk by, you know, what, where the money is. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say that. I'm going here, I'm doing this, and I say, why? Well, I got a, a better job offer. Well, it has nothing to do with it. Uh, it's something to pray about. That, that, that's not the final way. I'm making $2 an hour more. I don't give a, a holy woo-hoo about it. I mean... That has, that has nothing to do with the will and the plan of God for your life unless it's his blessing as a result of your obedience and you're going to take a step into it. There's some things in obeying the Holy Spirit that can seem a bit painful at the time, but yet are beneficial down the road. Amen. How many know the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted for like, what, 40 days? That's an awesome spirit-led moment. Right? Very challenging. I'm not saying that the Lord won't bless you and increase you. I'm just saying that we don't live by simply what we esteem as blessing in our life. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That means I, I'm not just making this decision because I believe it's the Lord's blessing me. I'm making this decision because I believe it's the Lord directing me. It's the Lord directing me. And I believe his blessing is upon what he directs. Y'all sit with me? His blessing is upon what he directs. So instead of us walking by what we feel and what we see and asking God to say, hey, bless this, please. If we'll walk by faith and not by sight and go by what he says and do what he says, then the blessing's already there. The provision's already there. Thank God he's gracious and merciful because we've, we've all made the wrong steps at time or two. No doubt about it. And God's big enough to make up the difference. No doubt about it. But at the same time, don't we want to walk how he told us to walk? Don't we want to live how he told us to live? Don't we, don't we want to act on how he told us to act? 
Well, he says to walk by faith and not by sight. Now, four times in Scripture it actually says this, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith by faith. One's, one's in Galatians chapter 3. It says the just shall live by faith. Another's in Romans 1 17. The just shall, shall live by faith. There's another one Habakkuk chapter 2 and it says the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by what? Faith. By his faith. So th- there are going to be some faith walking here. What you live by. That word live is is uh, in the Greek there, uh, in the Greek words there, it's a verb. It's a verb, meaning the action of our life is in accordance and in relation to our faith. The action of our life. That means what I do, the steps that I take, everything I do, the action that I'm taking is not based on emotion, fear, feeling, all these things. My, the action of my life is based upon and propelled by my faith. My faith. That faith begins in salvation in Jesus Christ. Right? So it begins there. Starts there. Centers there. But also then my faith grows in his word as I grow in understanding and revelation of his word. So then the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. So then what are you living by? It's a good question to ask. It's a good question to ask yourself. Too many times people are propelled in life by fear. By fear. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of, I'm doing all these things. I'm not talking about a holy reverential fear of God. They're just afraid all the time. Nervous, anxious, worried. You know, if you're worried, anxious, and nervous all the time, I'll tell you this. This ain't going to be good news for you, but we can help you out today. Um, you open the door to the devil doing that. Anxiety. Anxiety. Say, well, I'm just, I'm just anxious right now. No. It, it, you may be feeling anxious, but it, it's opening the door to the enemy. You know, once you open the door to the enemy, he can get in there and jack all kind of stuff up. You know that? Are y'all still with me? Y'all left already. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by, not by appearances, not by sight, not by appearances, not by sight, not by feeling. Not by emotion, not, not by fear, not by man's opinion, not by the latest Gallup poll, not by what I think everybody's going to want and be happy about and give me a pat on the back after. No, but by faith. I'm going to live by my faith. I'm a living according to his word, to what he has spoken, and to what his Holy Spirit is leading me to do that is in line with his word. Amen. That's how I'm living. That's how I'm living. That's how I'm talking. That's how I'm acting. What propels the action of my life is my faith in his word. What propels the action of my life. So, so then what's the question you should ask yourself concerning anything that's going on in your life, no matter what you may be feeling at the moment? What does God have to say about it? What does God's word say about it? Are there any promises from God's word on this? Is there any instruction on God's word on this? Is there any warnings that I should heed from God's word on this? Because if I'm going to walk by faith and live by faith, I need to get what God is saying about it and be a doer of that. I'm going to be a doer of that. Again, I'm not saying to live unemotionally. God gave you emotions. Jesus wept. I mean, look, he gave us emotions for a reason. However, emotions not in line with God's word, can be a horrible mess of a life. Amen. I don't feel like anybody loves me. But what did God say? I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I love you so much I gave my son for you. Yeah? So what does that mean? Don't matter what you feel if anybody loves you. God does. Said, Pastor, that's a little bit harsh. Well, I I want you to live life by faith, not by your feeling. Nobody likes me. Look at the person next to you and say, I like you. I like you. You're doing good. You're going to be all right. Nobody likes me, you know, because one one person told you that when you was in junior high. And you're still living off of what they said. And it's kind of funny to laugh at now, and it is, but... 
People, people take stuff like that through their whole life. You're ugly. You're, you're stupid. You're never going to be anything. And they have their faith. The action of their life is propelled by uh, Sister Homecoming Queen who walked by them and didn't give them the time of day. Right? Sad. Pathetic. But true. Or brother whatever, that he was really good. You come to find out 20, 30 years later, everybody don't look the same they used to look. That's all I'm saying. If you're a young person, I'm just saying don't judge everything by the way things are going now. Live according to the Word of God. You can go much further living according to His Word. So we live by faith and not by appearances. Not by appearance, not the way things look. So if you get a bad report from the doctor, a bad, bad report, that means it goes against what God's word says, but yet this is the facts of the case in your case. You've got cancer in your body. You've got this disease. You're only going to live this amount of time. Those sort of things. Well, what do we live by? What do we live by? What report do we believe? Well, of course, nothing wrong with going to doctors. In fact, I, I strongly encourage it. Okay, We've got some wonderful doctors in our church. However, what, what has the final word? Who has the final word? Who has the final say in your life? Well, God should. His word should. What do you believe then? Who are you believing? What are you believing? Let me ask you this. If you say you're believing God so much, then, then you should be meditating on what he says just as much as you say you believe you are. But if you meditate, I mean, spend a lot of your time thinking, muttering, talking about all kinds of things that go directly against what his word says, you're actually going to have your heart wrapped around whatever that report is more than you're going to have it wrapped around what his word says. Amen. I'm not against having televisions in hospital rooms. It's nice. You're going to be there for a few days or you're going to be there for a few weeks. You know, by God, watch Wheel of Fortune if you want to. However, if you just sit there for three, four, five, six hours in a row just watching something like that and you don't feed on the Word of God, you're going to have a whole lot of faith in Pat Sajak. <laughs> but your faith, the action of your life, won't be propelled by the Word of God. Won't be propelled by the Word of God. What are we supposed to live by? Well, by the Word of God, which is what? Faith. It produces faith in our heart, faith in our life. So we walk by faith, not by sight, not by appearances. Amen. Now you remember a man by the name of Abraham. You ever heard of a man by the name of Abraham? It actually says he's the father of us all. He's the father of faith for us all. Right? So then also it says that he took steps of faith. Steps of faith that we can see and that we can follow. But what are some of the first steps of faith that Abraham took? Anybody remember? I believe it's Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, it says that the, the Lord said to Abram, he says, get out of your country. Get out of your country. Get away from your family. Get away from your father's house and all that. And he says, and leave and go to a place I'm going to tell you to go. Go to a place that I'm going to tell you to go. That means he didn't tell him yet. But he did say to go. So he says, get away from what? Get away from what's comfortable Get away from what you know. Get away from everyone who knows you. I mean, obviously he's taking his family and his house with uh, his family with him. But get away from uh, your covering. Get away from what what's natural to you. And you go out into something that I have for you. He says, "Go." He says, "Go." How many of y'all think that's faith? Scripture says he's seventy-five years old. Seventy-five years old, getting out of his own country, going somewhere else. That's amazing, isn't it? Leaving what's comfortable to him, leaving father's house, leaving all that, and going somewhere that the Lord said to go, even though he didn't know exactly where, the Lord said to do it. And the Lord promised him this. He says, I'll bless you. I'll make your name great. You'll be a blessing. All these things that he promised him, but he still had to obey. Walk by faith and not by sight. Walk by faith in what? Faith in what God had said to do. Faith in what God had said to do. Faith, I, I'm, I'm, I've, I'm convinced, fully convinced that, that God wants to make some people great, their name great. Make them influential. Make them, make them a dynamic blessing to the world. And yet they won't leave the house. 
they're afraid to take that initial step of faith. Afraid to take that step of faith. To go, 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 go. Now I realize it takes faith to go. It takes faith to stay. It takes faith to come back to Alexandria. I went to Dallas. I thought, woo. Hey now. <laughs> hey. Here I am. D-Town. Actually, I was in Waxahachie, but whatever. I was in Dallas. Right? Go back to Alexandria. Alexandria? What's in Alexandria? Wait, Catfish Hut or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, you remember, what was the name of that place? Catfish Shack. You remember that place? Country cooking. As good as this country. Anybody remember those commercials? Y'all don't know. Y'all moved here or something. But. <laughs> Sherman knows. Thank you, brother. Country cooking as great as this country. Oh, man. Amazing commercial. I wish they still open, man. You can get a buffet of catfish. Okay? That's natural, though. God can use you where he's called you to be in a greater and more dynamic way than anywhere you call yourself to be. Amen. You move somewhere where you think you're really going to be something, you get swallowed up whole. But if God says to go, that's different. So then we walk by faith and not, not by sight. I have kids, three little kids. Most of y'all know this. Three little kids, Avery, Macy, and Jude. Wonderful, beautiful, amazing gifts from God. All right? Love them. They just went back to school this week. It was some sort of torture. Praise the Lord. Uh, <laughs> Like, oh, we have homework, praise God, when, every night, it's awesome. So anyway, it wasn't, it was awesome, but it was definitely an adjustment, praise God. So, but my kids, they get excited, you know, they, they, they want to show you something, you know, they show you something in their room that they've done, Jude built some kind of Lego thing, or Avery, you know, yesterday she was making up these, these games to play outside, you know, anyway, she's, so they'll say, hey, Dad, close your eyes, close your eyes, give me your hand, you know, now, um, some people, you know, if they tell me that, I trust them. I'm like, oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Other people, they say, you know, close your eyes, give me your hand. You're like, no, 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 you don't understand. We ain't that close. Like, we're close, but we're not, <laughs> we ain't that close. But with your kids, you know, you know, so you, you want to, you know, demonstrate trust toward your children. So, I, you know, they give me a hand, show me something, you know, I'm, and I, you know, what, what am I going to do? I'm going to open my eyes a little bit. I'm not stupid. They're going to walk me right into a wall, right? I mean, they walk me right into a door jam or something like that, you know. Stub my toe. Who knows? There's Legos all over his floor because he's building something, you know. Who knows? But they, no, and then they notice if you open your eyes. Up. Your eyes are open. Y'all know how kids are. Your eyes are open. Close your eyes. I'm like, no, they're not. They're not. And I'm like, God, forgive me for lying, but they are <laughs> open. But. Your eyes are open. Close your eyes. I'm like, okay, okay, fine. Close. So they're leading me somewhere to show me something, take me somewhere, right? I have to trust the one who's leading me. I've got to trust the one who's leading me, right? Take me, take me somewhere, show me something I hadn't seen yet, right? You know what that takes? Faith in my kids. Faith in my kids. Anybody have a GPS in your car, a GPS on your phone? Right? Right? I mean, if you're driving from wherever, we were driving to, uh, oh, where was it? Uh, Alabama, Gulf Shores or something a few weeks ago, we're going there and for a little family vacation thing. And so we're going there, and so you put that in the phone, right? You put your final destination in the phone, and then it shows you all these, you know, it's a whole map, and it shows you big, all the squiggly lines, then all of a sudden it takes you down all the way to where you're at right now, right? Right, right now, right now, you know, and 800 feet, you need to turn right. Are you following me? I'm not sure why it's a woman's voice on there, but it is. It's because if you're married, you may as well just look at your wife right now and say, you're right. I just want to let you know. Whatever we were talking about earlier, you're right. Okay, so. Who, who, who wants to hear a man's voice anyway? They'll be like, hey, take a right right here. You know, so it's you're like, shut up, man. Uh, so anyway, guys, if it was a man's voice, he wouldn't know where he was going anyway, so it wouldn't matter. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm going too far with this, but it's funny. I don't know where to go next. Just 
take a right somewhere up there or so, feel it out. <laughs> I'm feeling good about this turn right here. I'm feeling good about it. Anyway, it's so funny. But it just tells you, and it has segments. You know, if you take a turn here, then it'll say stay on this for what? 10 miles, 20 miles, 120 miles, right? It's just giving you the steps that need to be taken. Steps that need to be taken. It's the same way with the Lord. Even though we know there's a final destination, there's heaven, there's a home, there's a mansion, all these wonderful things that God has prepared for us, there's steps that are to be taken now that we have to take now. Direction that he gives us now that must be followed now. That's living by faith and not by sight. Living by faith and not by sight. What if I was driving toward Alabama and, and this thing told me to, to go whatever on, uh, let's see, east on I-10. And I said, this don't feel east. What if I'm driving east and I say, you know what? Kids, this doesn't feel like east to me. It feels a little more, you know, you know, northeast. It just feels that way, you know. I'm not sure if it's the chocolate I was eating earlier, or the pizza we had at lunch or whatever, but just this don't feel right. But I look down at my GPS and it says, you're going the right direction. But I don't feel like, you know, I don't know. Just don't. Well, what's going to happen if I, if I just go say, you know what? I'm not following that anymore. I'm just going to go another way. Where am I going to end up? New York. Boston. Canada. Right? Uh, who knows where I'm, I'm going to end up in Alaska at some point. I'm like, this don't look like the beach to me, y'all. This don't, this don't look like the beach. Well, how many times do we start out on our journey of faith, living by faith, walking by faith, then all of a sudden say, this don't feel like this is working out just right. This don't feel like it's working. I think I'm going to go my own way for just a little bit. I think I'm going to go my own I'm just going to do what I want to do for just a little while. And then, you know, you know, well, I mean, thank God he can redirect you. Thank God he can help you out. Boy, that sure is good. But if you're sitting in here right now listening to the word right now, you don't have to live like that forever. From now on, you don't have to live like that. You don't have to go, well, I'm going to miss it for the next five years because I feel like doing whatever I want to do, be a little flighty, a little weird or whatever. Even spirit-filled people can be really weird. No, I'm going to do what God said to do. I'm going to do what his word said to do. I'm going to walk by faith. Not by sight. I'm going to live by faith and not by my feelings. I'm going to live by God's word. I'm going to live by God's word, not the way things appear to be. Smith Wigglesworth said it this way. Uh, uh, no man looks at appearances when he believes God. No man looks at appearances when he believes God. That means what I'm looking at right here has the power to form what I'm seeing to change the scenery of what I'm seeing. What I'm looking at, and people call it blind faith, and I guess in some technical way that may be accurate, but it's not really blind faith. Because faith is actually looking at something. It's just not looking at what everybody else is looking at. I'm looking at the Word. I am looking at something. I'm looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm looking unto Him. Who began a good work in me is going to bring it to full completion. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. I'm walking by faith, not by emotion. I'm walking by faith, not by feelings. I'm walking by faith, not by fear. I'm walking by faith, not by man's opinion. I'm walking by faith, not by sight. Not by every wind of everything that happens in my life. I'm walking by faith, not by every whim that I have. I'm walking by faith, not by some commercial I saw in the middle of the night. 
Come on now. I'm walking by faith, not by what my three best friends always tell me I should do. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. I'm living according to his word, his law, his law that is written in this book and in my heart. The Holy Spirit that's dwelling on the inside of me has the capacity to lead me and guide me and help me in every area of my life if I will listen to him, obey him, and not go by what it feels like. I'm walking by faith. Everybody say, I'm walking by faith and not by sight. Everybody say it one more time. Say, I'm walking by faith and not by sight. One more time. Say, I'm walking by faith and not by sight. Amen. Amen. You, you know, uh, uh, I wear, I told y'all last week I wore contacts, right? Y'all know that. Fire in my eye. Y'all got that. Okay. And, and, uh, but when I don't have my contacts in, I have something else in. Anybody know what those are? I got, we're well, not in, they're on. Glasses. I got glasses on. These are my glasses, y'all. And it, every now and then I'll wear them, maybe just a couple times a year out of the house. Not very often. If I ever do, people go, hey, <laughs> what you doing? Um, who are you? So, but this, and I already have my contacts in, so this is going to be like, it doesn't feel good. But there's my glasses right there. But in the morning, Lord, help me not to fall off the stage. <laughs> morning, I'll get up and pray, or if it's late in the night or whatever, if I'm praying, something like that. I'll have my glasses on, but anybody walk around the house while you're praying, kind of look around? What do you see when you look around the house? Stuff to do. <laughs> Don't lie. Look around the house, you're like, that needs to be done, that needs to be done. So I'll go outside. I'll walk around the yard. I'll, what, what do you see when you walk around the yard? <laughs> Stuff to do. Right? You're like, I need to mow the yard, I need to edge, I need to pick up that limb over there, I need to call somebody about the gutters, and need to, right? You're like, yeah, all these things. And so I've kind of come to the, to the point where there's, there's times where I'll be praying, and I'll, I'll and turn as much of the lights out as possible in the house if it's early in the morning, and I'll take my glasses off. I hang them right there on my shirt, and I, and I can't see much now. <laughs> can't see much now. I know I can see enough to not run into the brick pillar that's in the middle of my living room. You know what I'm saying? I can see enough to not run into the couch. But generally speaking, I'm not, I'm not focusing in on any of this stuff that's around me. I'm focusing in on my fellowship with the Father. I'm living from the inside right here. So then what am I looking at? I'm looking on the inside. And I, my eyes are good enough I can still see the Word. I hold my Bible. I'm looking into this. But I'm not focused in on all the things that are surrounding me. All the things that are surrounding me. So I'm walking by faith, not by sight. Now in Matthew, let's look at this. Hebrews 10, 38 is the other place that says the just shall live by faith, in case you're wondering. In Matthew chapter 14, says this, and it's talking about, verse 22, um, Peter here and the disciples, and of course Jesus' interaction, Jesus interaction with them. It says this in verse 22, it says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. So what do we have here? The disciples in a boat without Jesus. Y'all with me on this? In a boat that Jesus, it says, made them. That's, that's an encouraging word. Made them. Sent them away. Sent the multitudes away. Verse 23 says, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now on the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. He's walking on water, y'all. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Amen. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had gone, uh, come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. 
And immediately stretched out, and Jesus, immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and called him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshiped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Picture we get here is them in a boat without Jesus. Boat's in the middle of the water, nighttime, right? Jesus comes walking on the water, everybody gets afraid, right? Jesus said, Don't be afraid. You'll find in Scripture uh, uh, that God, and anytime you see God or Jesus referencing fear, it, it, and he's, he's, not, he's not petting it on the head. Don't doubt. Don't, don't be unbelieving, but believe. So right here he says, uh, Peter says, if it's you, Lord, if it's you, Lord, tell me, tell, tell me, tell me to come on out there. And Jesus said what? What did he say? How many words is that? One word. He said one word, and Peter took a step out of the boat. I would need like a dissertation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, explain a few things to me real quick about how, to, how you're doing that, and then we'll see. You know what I'm saying? I'll, Flip a coin in the boat, you know, flip it three out of five times, paper, rock, scissors with James and John, you know what I mean? Like, no. One word, come. Come. I wonder, I wonder how many of us would step into the supernatural if we would simply obey walk by faith walking by faith doesn't mean things are easy he's out of the boat walking by faith doesn't mean it's comfortable in fact he's going out of what would be comfort to be in a boat in the middle of the sea into something uncomfortable waves wind and he steps on it, and he walks on the water. Now, don't be too harsh on Peter. He walked on the water. Jesus said, come on, don't doubt. If you can take one step on the water, you can take two. <laughs> if you can take two steps on the water, may as well take, we got something good going on right here. What you're already doing is Miraculous. What you're already doing is supernatural. Why doubt now? Why doubt now? You've been following the Lord all these years. Why turn your back now? You've been He's shown up supernaturally for you time and time again. Why turn your back now? He's done it time. And, he's healed your body. He's shown up. He's freed you. He's delivered you. He's set you free. Come on, he's done it time and time and time and time again. You're already walking on the water. Why doubt now? Why stop believing now? Why don't you just stay in faith? He says, look, man, little faith. Come on, what he's saying is, would you just stay in the faith that you have? Because apparently the faith that you have is potent enough. So that you can step on water and walk on it. So would you extend that step to another one? You notice that he says that Peter is looking at the, the winds and the waves. That's, that's what happened. He just got his eyes on all the other stuff. Eyes on everything else. If he had kept his gaze. It's right in there. Right focused in. He just walked all the way to Jesus. How do we live? Faith. How do we walk? Come on, how do we live? How do we walk? How's he called us to live? How's he called us to walk? Come on, how's he called us to live? How's he called us to walk? By faith. By faith. You notice in Hebrews chapter 11, it says that a whole bunch. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 11, we call it the faith chapter. 
but because it's because it's on so much faith stuff. It says this Hebrews eleven. Hebrews eleven it says this. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse one. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. I'm going to read all the places it says by faith. Are y'all with me? By faith. It says, by faith we understand the worlds are framed by the word of God. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith Enoch was taken away so that he should not see death. By faith Noah, being divinely warned of, of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called out. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise. By faith Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. Amen. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. By faith, uh, Moses, he forsook Egypt. By faith, he kept the Passover. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they. By faith, the heart of Rahab did not perish. Through faith, it says, they subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of the fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness, were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned, uh, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting the deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Everything, even it says people died in faith. What better way to go than in faith? All these, all these, through faith. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. By faith, by faith, through faith, by faith. Everything's by faith. Noah built the ark by faith. He's warned of God. He obeyed God. Doing that, that's in faith. I'm obeying what he said to do. That's what I'm doing. Everything's by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by faith. Not by what we can see. We walk by faith, not by, by the way things appear to be. We walk by faith, not by emotion. We walk by faith, not, not by the contrary circumstances. Amen. Abraham's life, Romans chapter 4, it says, uh, uh, against hope, and hope he believed. Amen. Actually, it says one translation, when everything was hopeless, he still believed. 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 Don't tell me you're tired of living by faith and you've been doing it for three weeks. Don't tell me you tried faith stuff for a year. Don't tell me you tried faith stuff for two years. Don't tell me you tried faith stuff for three years. Don't tell me you tried stuff for five years, ten years. Tw don't tell me you, you, don't, you don't try faith stuff. You do it. We don't try this. We do this. Well, praise the Lord. What if I'm you know, laying in the middle of my floor in the middle of the night crying, bawling because something happened? Well, that's all right. Ball, cry, all that stuff, but just get back in faith real quick. Oh, God. Okay, oh, God, for a moment, but you better get back in faith real quick. You better get back in faith real quick. Because faith gives substance to what we hope for. Thank God for hope. But faith will fill that hope with something. It'll make what you're hoping for one day going to come to pass. Come to pass. Woo, praise God. By faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. I think, I think the world has seen enough of the flighty Christians. You know, like flighty, like just weird. No, no, we live by faith, Hallelujah. not by sight. I mean, maybe if you want to call that flighty, maybe I guess, but no, I'm not saying I'm doing one thing, following the Lord, and then living a different way. I'm not saying, "Oh Lord, I'm gonna love you, I'm gonna serve you," da, 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 and telling all friends, da, 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 da. then the very next week. 
Doing something directly against what God's word says. No. I'm going to live by my faith. I'm going to live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Whatever you want to call that, that's fine. I call it living by faith. God calls it living by faith. That's how we're going to live. That's how we're going to live. I said that's how we're going to live. Praise the Lord. Well, say, well, I'm, I'm too young. No, you're not too young to live by faith. I'm getting older. Abraham was 75. When it's time to retire, he moved out of the house, went on a missions trip. Told all the family, we're going together. Pack up the stuff. Time to go. By faith. For Peter, what was it? One word. Come. I must confess, there have been times that the Lord's given me more than one word, and I still didn't do it. And then, then a year later, the Lord goes, you remember how I told you that? Yeah, I'm just telling you that one more time. Just see, just, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know, one of the things, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll finish here. One of the things is, uh, we, when we talk about our staff meetings, we're, we're uh, going to be moving our Wednesday night service from 7 o'clock to 6.30. And praying about it. There's a lot of practical reasons as well. People can come, you know, and get back home for their kids and all that stuff. And getting the good, they got to go to work early, stuff like that. But I was praying about it for like, for how long, babe? A year and a half? Maybe two years. Had it in my heart, moved to 630. Just trying to find the right time to do it, you know. I like to make sure we, I don't like to say, oh, I'm praying today and, well, we're moving the 9 o'clock to 930 next week. Then show up next week and go, oh, we're moving, moving it back to 9 o'clock. I think that's stupid. I want to pray about it and do the right thing and do it for the long haul. So I, um, this past week, and we've been gone for a few weeks and, uh, and on missions trips and youth camp, stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, so I was praying, and um, I'm studying walking by faith, right? Y'all still with me? Yeah. I'm, pr- I'm praying about walking by faith, studying the Word, walk by faith, not by sight, live by faith, live, you know, all that stuff. And so I'm, I'm looking at all that, and uh, the Lord just said, you know, you're, uh, you're studying a lot about walking by faith, but you can't move a service 30 minutes. That's the Lord talking to me. Now, you can't talk to me like that. I'm just saying, Lord did. <laughs> Lord did. You can't move a service 30 minutes without needing, you know what I mean? Like a sign from heaven in the stars. You know, I'm like, okay, God. How many times do we get stuck in our little rut? And God's like, if you make this, this one adjustment, you'll obey me in this area. It's going to be better for you down the road. It's going, you're going to be more right in the middle of what I'm telling you to do. And yet we struggle through stupid little things. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Do I really have to do that? I don't want to do that. Oh, but they've been my bestie for five years, you know. Or, you know, uh, make this adjustment in that relationship. Oh, God. It's so, ah. Right? And then, you know, I give myself away. Give myself away so you can use me. Take my heart, take my life as a living sacrifice. I need some tissue. All my dreams, all my plans, Lord, you know. 6.30, well, I'm not coming now. Right? What do we live by most of the time? Not, not, it's not my confession, not what I'm believing for. But how many times do we just live naturally is all I'm saying. Carnally, just based on, I know we live in a world, you got watches and you got schedules. I'm not saying that that doesn't matter. All I'm saying is how many times do we live our life based upon just natural things and not things that are birthed from the word of God or from times in prayer or the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us. The Lord knows you have a schedule. The Lord knows you have your business. The Lord knows you've got, you got places to go with it. And the Lord knows that. And many times it's him directing you to do it. However, if he's put something on your heart by the Spirit of God, 
lines up with his word, there's a reason.